Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here and welcome back to another Monster Hunter Generations video. And in today's video, I wanted to put together a quick guide to talk about the Deviant Monsters. How you unlock them, how the quests work, where you get special permits, etc. I will also be doing a follow-up video to speak specifically about Deviant Armor and Weapons, as that's a topic in itself. But for the time being, this is just about the monsters and the quests. So if you do enjoy this and you do find it helpful, then as always a like would be super appreciated. And if you guys have any questions, then by all means, drop them down below. Now, to begin with, the Deviant Monster system is one of, if not the, primary endgame activities in Generations. Deviant Monsters are where you'll find some of the best gear, but also where you'll be presented with some of the biggest challenges. While they start off relatively easy, once you get to the higher level versions, you'll be fighting monsters of difficulty comparable to a max level 140 guild quest from Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Deviant monsters are different to subspecies as they're said to have survived previous hunter encounters and have taken on new traits and learned new abilities in the process, and as such they're more powerful, more aggressive, they have new moves, a unique look to them, and they will require that you tackle them a little bit differently to their regular counterparts. Now there are 12 deviant monsters in total, but in order to face off against them you'll first need to unlock them by completing specific quests in the hunter's hub. So with that being said, let's start there. Some of them you'll already have unlocked as their unlock conditions are also tied to key quests which you'll obviously be doing as you rank up, but the other ones you'll need to stray a little bit further off the golden line. First up, in HR1 there are three deviants to unlock. The Red Helm Azuros is tied to the quest The Ingredient of Legend, and for this you'll also need to have done a couple of villager requests, but it's super early in the game so it's pretty safe to assume that you will all have this quest. For Snow Baron Lagombi you'll need to do the quest Snow with Occasional Lagombi, and to unlock the Stone Fist Daimyo, you will need to do the quest Shells of Steel. Then if we jump over to HR2, you'll need to do the quest Royal Assassination to unlock the Dread Queen Rathian. And this is a key quest, so again you will likely do this one anyway. Moving over to high rank, starting in HR4, in order to unlock the Drill Tusk Tetsukabra, you will need to do the quest Tackling the Tetsukabra. Then moving over to HR5, there are three Deviants to unlock. Crystal Beard Uragan, which has a super awesome name by the way, loving that crystal beard, comes from the quest Fight or Uragan. Dead Eye Yangaruga comes from the quest Worst Trip Ever. And finally, this one I don't personally have myself just yet, as I've been a little bit lazy on village quests, but after doing a few villager requests for Poke Village, you will get the quest Nagakuga Throwdown, and that one will unlock the Silver Wind Nagakuga. In this case, I've got Socks hosting it for me, so at least you can see what it looks like on screen. Then finally, moving over to HR6 for the last four Deviants, Thunderlord Zenoga comes from the quest Topple the Monarch, Grimclaw Tigrex comes from the quest What a Girl Wants. In order to unlock Dread King Rathalos, you'll need to do the quest Rathalos Run. And finally, saving the best till last, in order to unlock Hellblade Glavanus, the source of some of the best weapons in the game, you'll need to do the quest Duel in the Volcanic Hollow. So, those are your quests, and each time you complete one, the Deviant Monster will be added to your list. If you then go to the Hunter's Hub, and go down to the Special Permit option, you'll see a list of monsters. However, in order to go on these quests, you'll need Special Permits. Those can come from two places. You can either go to the Cat in the Prep area and select Trader, Browse Wares, Special Permits, and buy the permit for the particular monster with Y Academy points, or if you have Street Pass enabled, and you pass other Monster Hunter players while out and about, then you can collect Special Permit passes from there too. Bear in mind that only the person that puts up the quest will need to use the permit, but if you want to level the quest up, then it's in your interest to post it yourself. See, Deviant quests are different. I mentioned earlier that they start off easier, then get harder. When you select the quest, you will see that the first quest is level 1. Every time you complete a Deviant quest, the next level unlocks, and when you complete the following level, the level after that unlocks, and so on and so forth. Each Deviant monster has 10 levels, the first few levels are relatively easy, but when you start getting to around level 6 and above, things start to step up a notch. And then when you get to level 9 and 10, that is when you're talking max level guild quest difficulty. The quest only levels up for the person that posts it, so if you are just in the lobby with someone hosting them, then your quest will still remain at whatever level it was when you started. Also bear in mind that upon completing a specific level in the reward box at the end, among the monster parts you'll also get tickets, and these tickets correspond to the level of the quest, level 1 through 10. And to fully upgrade armor and weapons, you'll need all of those tickets. But that's of course something I'll go into more detail about in the Deviant Armor and Weapon video later. For the time being, that is everything you need to know about the quests. That's how you unlock them, how the system works, and where you get your tickets. So hopefully this has been useful. Again, if you did enjoy it, then a like would be super appreciated. And thanks for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.